Welcome to Cambridge Health Alliance Lunch and Learn series. I am Roberta Robinson and I'm marketing manager for uh, geriatrics. And we have a couple of uh, housekeeping rules. We have Mary Hammer today, who is, I'm excited to have her. She's a registered dietitian uh, with Cambridge Health Alliance. And we're gonna start the new year off right with some healthy tips and healthy food. And uh, we are recording, as you've just heard, we are recording this uh, session. And I would ask everyone to please mute and um, put your questions in the chat. And if, um, if you could just limit it to your question because we have a limited amount of time. And of course we wanna welcome our Facebook friends. Saludis Vida, welcome aboard and thank you for joining us. So Mary, you have the stage. Thank you so much for joining us for this. Thank you, Roberta. Um, I'm glad to be here and learn. So I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen. Just getting, oops. All right, so I guess we'll just move on from the title page here since I, I skipped ahead. Um, so I wanted to provide an overview of, of today's presentation since I know we have a limited amount of time. I'll first start by giving some tips and tricks for how to start the new year off in a nutritious way and really focusing on getting back to basics and just some really practical tools for you to use in your everyday lives. Then I'll tie this all together with a cooking demonstration. Um, and finally, we'll do a question and answer session. This first slide here, I, I chose this um, to really illustrate um, the fact that as a nation, we're not getting enough fruit and vegetables. And this is something that I think a lot of people have heard about, um, but I really wanted this to be the focus of the presentation just because if we're not even able to do a lot of the basics, then you know all of these all of these diets, the you know they get so complicated. And we really don't need to complicate things. We just need to focus on getting the basics done. Um, so what this graph is taken from is the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey, which is used to inform our federal nutrition guidelines. Uh, this is representative of the entire population of the country. So what this is showing is on the far left, it'll draw you your attention to that first bar. Anything in blue is the percent that's not getting enough of the recommendations, whereas the purple is we're getting, we're meeting the recommendation or we're, we're getting more. So what that first bar is showing is only about 10% of Americans get enough vegetables each day. And if we look about halfway down the the graph or in the middle that shows total fruit, and only about 20% have get enough fruits during the day. So really this is this is something it's a good place to start at too because it's we're focusing on what can we eat more of rather than what do we need to take away. So having more fruits and vegetables is a really good place to start to improve our health and prevent our risk of chronic disease. As I mentioned in the previous slide, so that graph was, was taken, the data was taken to help inform our federal nutrition guidelines. And many of you might remember, we used to have a food pyramid, um, but this has transitioned over the years and now we have a plate to really illustrate what does this look like in your everyday life. Um, so as you can see from the plate, half of your plate should be fruits and vegetables. So that's the largest component of the plate, something that we're really trying to focus on getting a lot of. And for most people, um, you know, if you need more calories, you might need a little bit more. If you need less calories, it's a little bit less. But generally, most people will need about one to two cups of fruit or, and two to three cups of vegetables per day. Um, and then for the rest of the plate, it's showing your grains, which are things like your, your rice and your pasta, uh, quinoa and then your protein foods, which are going to be things like your meat, fish, and plant-based protein like lentils, beans, and tofu. And then on the upper left corner, we have the, the, the dairy products um, or, or dairy alternatives. So now thinking more practically, how can we eat more fruits and vegetables? Um, 
you know, I listed here a lot of different ideas, which you can kind of read through and, and but basically the, the idea of including more fruits and vegetables in your diet is to think about things that you're already eating and think about how you can modify them to achieve more of that balance, like in the my plate, or to just sneak in some vegetables or some fruit. So like, if you like sandwiches, can we add some vegetables there or can we have them on the side? If you like yogurt or oatmeal, can we have some fruit in there? One thing that often comes up with having more fruits and vegetables is, you know, they, they tend to be more expensive for some people. So what I really recommend in, in terms of this is thinking about being flexible in what fruits and vegetables that you, you want to have to, to go with what's on sale at the store. Um, so having that flexibility will give you, will give you more room to buy fruits and vegetables in your budget. And it also buying things in different forms. So looking at fresh, frozen and canned vegetables to see what is the best value um, or, or canned or frozen fruit too, as long as they're low in sugar or low in sodium. So looking for like a no salt added or no sugar added variety. Um, okay. And then the other complaint with more fruits and vegetables we often see is that they take more time to cook depending on how you're preparing them. So we're going to be looking for um, pre-chopped vegetables or pre-washed salad greens can be time savers. Um, the trade-off here is looking at cost. So sometimes if something is prepared or if there's more preparation done for you, it's going to cost more because of that labor that's involved. So thinking about what makes sense for you and for your budget, um, making that trade-off. Also buying things in bulk can help you know, looking at the five pound bag of carrots versus the three pound bag. Um, the only caveat is if you're not going to use the whole five pound bag of carrots before it goes bad, it's probably better to stick with the three pound. Also making use of the microwave can be a time saver in terms of cutting down on the pots and pans that you need to cook. Um, it also allows you to portion out a smaller amount of, of vegetables if, you know, you're cooking for just yourself or um, a smaller family or no one else in your house wants to eat the vegetables, you can just take out what you need um, and cook them in the microwave. Those frozen vegetables will have instructions. Um, another thing that's, that can be really great is, you know, if you're not wanting a cold salad but you have some salad greens, those can also be wilted in the microwave um, so that you have something a little warm. Um, and it's a great way to use up, you know, some salad greens that might be getting past their, their date. And finally, the idea of meal prep, so being able to cook once and eat twice or three times. For food safety reasons, we'll want to keep only about three to four days worth of food in the fridge, so keeping that in mind if you're doing some meal preparation. And this can also be not necessarily just cooking, but it can also be just um, washing and cutting up vegetables ahead of time so that you have them to grab and go for snacks um, or to use in your dinner. So that brings us to our cooking demo. So I'm going to go, so this is going to be a Southwestern spaghetti squash. This is a great recipe to do for meal prep. Um, it could be for you know lunches for the week or for a dinner, and it can be eaten hot or cold. This is the recipe for the spaghetti squash. I'll just go through this briefly and then we'll jump into the, the preparation. So the main ingredient, you know, as you guessed, is the spaghetti squash, spices, um, and some different vegetables. This is a really versatile recipe, so if you don't like one of these ingredients, you can swap it out for a different vegetable, or if you prefer, you know, um, beans made from, like, dried beans rather than canned, you can absolutely sub that in as well. And then for the spices, I tend to be... I can't tolerate a, a ton of spice, so I so I dialed this back a little bit. Um, but if you like it more spicy or less spicy, you can adjust the seasonings or even add different ones 
you know, if you like turmeric or, or if you like, um, you know, other sorts of spices, you can absolutely change those. Okay. And so what I've done ahead of time of this recipe, given our, our limited time for the, the presentation, is I went ahead and I've done the, the two, I've done the, the first um, up through step four, where I very carefully cut the squash, um, you know, took out the strings and I, I cooked it in the oven. So I'm going to go ahead now and stop sharing my screen so that I can show you. Okay. So this is my squash that I've roasted in the oven. Um, and I just want to make a note, you know, this, this is probably the hardest part is cutting the squash. So when you're doing that, just be very, very careful. Make sure you're using a sharp knife because using a dull knife can actually be more dangerous. Um, okay. So now to start making the salad, we're going to shred the squash and it's going to make kind of like noodles. So that's where it gets the name like spaghetti squash. I'm just using a fork here and it doesn't take a lot of effort. You know, I can just do this very pretty gently once you're getting toward the bottom, um, coming up a bit more. So you can, it's getting more um, like noodles here. An alternative to this recipe is where I'm going to be making this just all in one bowl and then I'll probably just portion it out. Another alternative is you can actually, once everything is mixed together, if you can have your, your squash intact enough, you can actually put it back in to the, the shell and then you can um, sprinkle a little bit of cheese on it and roast it in the oven for like five minutes um, just to get that cheese melted on top to give it a little bit extra flavor. Spaghetti squash is actually, you know, it's really great. You know, this is more like a Mexican spin on this, but you can also do all sorts of different salads with this if you wanted to do like an Asian style noodles. Uh, or if you wanted to make it like more Italian, you can go with tomato sauce and like ground turkey. So I have most of it out just for the sake of time. I'm not going to be too, too detailed with getting all of this out. So now I'm going to add some chopped tomatoes. This is about three of these size tomatoes. Um, the original recipe called for Roma tomatoes, but you can be flexible to use whatever, whatever type you like. Or you can even use the grape tomatoes. And then I have here one can, it's a 15 ounce can of drained and rinsed black beans. I'm not partial to any brand, but I just wanted to show this is the reduced sodium kind. And if you're not able to find the reduced sodium, that's okay. As long as you rinse it, if rinsing the beans can reduce the sodium by about 50, I'm sorry, 40%. And then this is a some frozen, not frozen, some canned corn, another 15 ounce can. And this is the no salt added. You can also use frozen if you like, but that will just need to be thawed out first. And then I have a teaspoon and a half or half a tablespoon of cumin and chili pepper. So I'm just going to, oh, I'm sorry. I forgot one ingredient. I have some bell pepper. These add some more color in here, some, add some green. So this is one chopped bell pepper. Okay. More colors means more, more nutrients. So we're just gonna mix this all together. 
it's a little bit tricky with the different textures, um, you know, with the squash and then all the, the looser, you know, have um, beans and corn and things. But just best you can, you can mix it up. You can always use the, you know, more, the, like the corn and bean mixture more as a topping. I'm gonna try a spoon here too, just to get this really incorporated together. Okay. So I'm just going to portion some of this out into a bowl here. Then to add the finishing touches, you can add a little bit of lime juice. So I have some lime wedges here. I'm just going to add a little bit of juice here over the, okay. And the final touch is to add some, you know, good healthy fats to the dish we can go ahead and add some avocado slices. Okay. I'm just taking the avocado here and I'm just going to cut down the center. And when you're cutting, just again, being careful, you wanna have your fingers in like a claw so that if you end up hitting, when you're cutting, you're gonna be hitting your knuckles rather than your, the tips of your fingers. It's going gentle when you hit the pit, um, just kind of circling this around until you feel it separate and then you can just pull it apart. Then I'm just going to, um, for this, I'm not gonna, just to make it a little bit easier to, I'm going to actually just kind of slice through, not all the way, but, just so I can feel the skin. So basically you're trying to score this. And just making some chunks of the avocado. And you can do a little bit more, a little bit less, depending on um, what you're feeling like. But this is a pretty low calorie dish. So adding the fat gives, helps you to keep you full and keep you satisfied. And avocado is also a great source of potassium and fiber. So then we'll just, um, Push this out into our dish here. Okay, and there you have it. We have Southwestern spaghetti squash with some avocado. So I think this now, um, brings us to our question and answer session. So I'll turn it over to Roberta. So Mary, if you could uh, tell us whether it's best to serve cold or whether it is uh, best to be reheated or is it just personal choice? It's more personal choice. And also um, I noticed that when you, you have your vegetables, you have the way you've listed them, fresh, canned, or, um, or um, fresh, frozen, or canned. So have you uh, listed them in order of preference? Like fresh is better, and then um, frozen is next, and then canned would be last? So it, it really depends um, in terms of on a few different factors. So when looking at fresh vegetables uh, versus canned or frozen, for example, the difference, you know, fresh or, I'm sorry, frozen or canned vegetables can often be more nutritious um, than the, the fresh, depending on when they were, the time it took from taking them off the plant to preserving them. So for example, with frozen vegetables, oftentimes they're picked and then immediately frozen. Whereas 
if we're getting our vegetables from California or Florida or something, it's going to take a few days for them to get to the store. So as soon as they're picked, that's when they start to lose nutrients. Um, so in those cases, you know, locking in the flavors with a frozen vegetable, they can be more nutritious, granted that they're also um, not adding any salt or sugar. It, it can be similar, but it also keep in mind that these are cooked. So with, with some vitamins like our B and our C vitamins, those are going to be more sensitive to heat versus some of our other vitamins like A, D, E, and K. Those can be actually enhanced by cooking. So really with, with nutrition in general, variety is key. So if you're having a variety of different types of fruits and vegetables and in a variety of forms, that's going to help give you the best nutrition. Yeah, well, at this at looks, I bet we're all salivating here and uh, and you get to eat it and we're jealous. Uh, so thank you for sharing this recipe. It looks just fabulous. Uh, and Mexican is one of the flavors that I love. So I'm sure I'll be trying it for sure. Um, it, it makes quite a lot that mm -hmm. one. So exactly. and, you, and with this well, I guess it depends on how big your appetite is, but with this last you several meals, I would think. Yes, yes. You might get a week out of that. <laughs> It'll look like a lot. Yes, it'd be great for you know a big family or if you're doing some, some meal prep for your lunches or for your dinner. So if you wanted to, if that would be too much for one person, you, I suppose, you know, I'm just thinking you might even be able to, put those ingredients into a soup if you wanted to make a soup as well. Yeah. Is it, would, that, would that work? I think that would work because a lot of these, well, the squash is cooked, but you know, the tomatoes, um, you know, in the peppers that they, they aren't cooked. So you could, that could probably be a great, you know, idea for like a quick soup. And I, one more question I have is if, are soup, um, vegetables in soups as beneficial as fresh vegetables? Mm. Do you lose anything? So it, it depends on, on the type. So with, with vegetables like that are higher in vitamin C, so your broccoli, cauliflower, bell peppers, those, you know, vitamins are going to be more sensitive to the heat. So you can lose a little bit of, of the vitamin content versus a lot of your um, orange and vegetables, red vegetables, leafy greens that are higher, you know, in vitamin K and vitamin uh, A, you know, those are enhanced by cooking. So, but it's always better that you're eating the vegetables than you're not. And okay. Mary, I wanna thank you so much for this. This has been, um, uh, fabulous and the cooking demo is our first cooking demo that we joined on our lunch and learn and it's um it, it looks fabulous so thank you so much and it's relatively easy that's the thing that people don't have a lot of time these days and and you can uh, do all the prep work ahead of time and just the toughest part is cooking the squash or cutting the squash as you said right yeah and you can even while you're cooking the squash you can do the prep work like cutting you know, the, the pepper and the tomato and rinsing the beans. Yeah, so thank you so much. And I, uh, oh, wait a minute, we will put, oh, <laughs> yes, we will. We will put this recording on CHA. Is that correct, Lexi? We have that question, yes. Um, and so I wanted to just let everybody know, thank you so much, Mary, we appreciate this. <laughs> we can't wait to try it, everyone says. They're all salivating. <laughs> <laughs> and um, but you get the fun part you get to eat it but I just want to let everybody know well, we have thank you so much it was awesome it was nice to take a moment to learn we have these comments coming in Mary uh, as we're doing this I just wanted to remind everybody that uh, we do this lunch and learn the first Wednesday of every month. Next month, it will be February 2nd, and we'll have Dr. Ayesha Khalid, who's gonna be talking about um, sinus and snoring and some new exciting um, uh, practices that are and procedures that are coming down the pipe. So thank you. Uh, do we have any other questions, any other comments? Um, what is your favorite way to have fruits and vegetables, Mary? 
Oh, that's that's a tough one. There's so many great there's so many great things, but um, one thing that comes to mind is I love roasted vegetables, like roasted um, mm -hmm. eggplants with you know mixing like onions or zucchini, peppers. That's one of my favorites. Yeah, it's my favorite too. <laughs> Uh, let's see. And another way that we might consider at, uh, adding some fruits and vegetables to snacks. Mm. So to snack, you know, I, I would say, you know, one way might be adding thinking about some dried fruit. So that's a great option. You know, if you need to bring something to work, you're on the go, you know, it's not going to go bad. So having like a trail, making your own trail mix with raisins and, and almonds or peanuts. They tend to be a little high in sugar, though, do they? So if anyone has to watch, is that true? Well, it's, it's a more concentrated sugar because it's a, you know, you're losing the water volume from the dried fruit. So the portion size is going to be small, typically about a quarter of a cup for a dried fruit. Great. I know a good snack is like apples and peanut butter or celery and peanut butter, too, right, for the go? Well, that's great. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Do we have any other questions? or comments or concerns. Lexi, do you have any that you can think about? I think this was great, Mary. Thank you so much for sharing this recipe. I can't wait to try it. Um, <clears throat> I don't have any other questions right now. I think this was really wonderful. Yeah, so I guess that completes our Lunch and Learn for for this month and Mary, thank you again so much for taking time out of your busy day. And thank you everyone for participating. Hopefully, um, hopefully you'll all try this recipe and, and uh, we'll all be good to go. So thank you so much.